the bride of the Messiah Yeshua is one woman. Matthew 25, verse 1 through 13, original Aramaic version, Isaiah chapter 66, and Hebrews chapter 6. In this study, we are going to read about the delusions Isaiah the prophet warned about in Isaiah 66, 4, when we examine the bride, the lamb's wife mentioned in Matthew 25, 1, according to Matthew's original Aramaic scriptures, the same bride mentioned in Revelation 18, 23, Revelation 19 in verse 7 and 8, Revelation 21 in verse 9 and in verse 11, and Revelation 22, 17, with a focus on why there are certain misconceptions about the identity of who exactly the Queen of the South is mentioned in Matthew 12, 42, and in Luke eleven thirty one, who I do not believe is the Bride the Lamb's wife written about in the book of Revelation and why I believe this confusion does fall under the Isaiah 66, 4 category. In this study, we are also going to examine Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11 and 12, and our blessed hope of Titus two thirteen. So to begin our study, I'm going to read Matthew 25, 1, according to Matthew's original Aramaic scriptures from the Aramaic Bible in plain English. Then the kingdom of heaven will be compared to ten virgins. The same took their lamps and went to meet the groom and the bride. I have known for quite some time that Isaiah chapter 66 speaks of Adonai Elohim choosing delusions from mockers and scoffers because of the hardness of their hearts in the last days, according to Isaiah 66, 4, which makes clear, I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. And so we can read further in Isaiah 66, 5, Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. And so we can read um, in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11 and 12, And we desire that every one of you do shew the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Okay? And so these people, you know, are in alignment with John sixteen thirteen, John seventeen seventeen. Um, you know, they are the children of light, you know, part of the Church of Philadelphia, who are guided into all truth and shown things to come, who are sanctified in the truth, John seventeen seventeen, because they have allowed Adonai Elohim to set them free indeed in alignment with John eight thirty two and John eight thirty six. Okay. They are not slothful with the words, okay? Um, so I have been requested to read all of Isaiah chapter 66 and Hebrews chapter 6 um, because really it's not a coincidence that from um, Isaiah 66 to Matthew 25 it is 210 inclusive chapters and from Matthew chapter 1 the first chapter of the New Testament to Hebrews chapter 6, it is 210 chapters. Um, Hebrews chapter 6 is the 210th chapter of the King James Version Bible New Testament. You know, and we know that um, Revelation 22 is the 260th chapter of the New Testament from Matthew 1. Um, and so um, to begin, let's start by reading Isaiah 66, 1. Um, Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me and where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembles at my word. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrifices a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offers an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burns incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delights in their abominations. I also will choose their delusions, and will bring their fears upon them, because 
when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that renders recompense to his enemies. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith thy God? Rejoice ye with Jerusalem, and be glad with her, all ye that love her. Rejoice for joy with her, um, all ye that mourn for her, um, that ye may suck and be satisfied with the breast of her consolations, that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory." For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall ye suck, ye shall be born upon her sides, and be dandled upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. And when ye see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like an herb. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants and his indignation toward his enemies for behold the lord comes with fire and his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire for by fire and by his sword will the lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the lord shall be many okay um and then we can continue with um, verse 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree, in the midst eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. Um, and this will happen during the millennial reign when they see that he is king of kings and that he will have a queen, you know, who is an anti-type of Esther, Esther 2.17, who will be crowned queen, fulfilling Psalm 45.9. You know, there will be many people um, from many different nations that will see his glory. Um, verse 19, And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations, to Tarshish, Bull and Lud, um, that draw the bow to Tubal and Javan, to the isles afar off, that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts. To my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. And I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And this um, account that Isaiah talks about in Isaiah 66, 23, um, it correlates with what Zechariah wrote in Zechariah fourteen sixteen. Every year for a thousand years, people will be expected to ascend up to the holy city, the new Jerusalem, to offer up gifts during tabernacles. Why? Because he was born in a manger, a type of a tabernacle. He was conceived on Hanukkah in the winter, and then nine months later he was born in the fall during the Feast of Tabernacles. And so... We can see here in Isaiah 66, 23, 
um, that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And this will happen and they will be able to see him and his queen, you know, and they will be able to worship him and she will worship her Lord as proven in Psalm 45, 11. And so to continue, let's read verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Okay, and this will happen. I can only imagine what it will look like. Huh. I'm so glad I'm saved and born again and set free indeed and guided into all truth because many, many will fall in this category. I, I mean, it, it's really sad, but we have to pray for the lost and those that are preaching a false doctrine, you know, these very last days. Um, so really, it cannot be a coincidence that from Isaiah chapter 66 to Matthew chapter 25, um, there are a total of 210 inclusive chapters pointing directly to the 210th chapter of the King James Version Bible New Testament, that is Hebrews chapter 6. And so I'm going to go through and read Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 through 20. Hebrews 6, verse 1 through 20, King James Version. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Moshiach, like the elementary principles. You know, we all go through elementary school, middle school, and then high school in our teenage years. And then we move on to college, you know, it's basically like saying, you know, we need to move on from the elementary principles of the doctrine of the Messiah Yeshua. We need to be weaned off of milk and we want the meat of the word, okay? So um, it's very clear that we really need to leave the elementary principles of the doctrine of Christ um, so we can go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Um, and this will we do if God permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost or the Ruach HaKadosh and have tasted the good word of Elohim, the meat of the word and the powers of the world to come. This is, you know, after the age of grace ends during his millennial reign. Okay, so they know what will happen. They are guided into all truth. They have accepted the meat of the word. Okay, and they're no longer bottle fed, you know, and just presented the elementary principles of the doctrine of the Messiah Yeshua. Okay, and so they know what will happen in the age to come during his 1000 year reign. Um, and so I would like to reread that. Um, you know, in light of Hebrews 6, 1 through 5. Therefore, leaving the elementary principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, unto the meat of the word, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward Elohim, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment, and this will we do, if Yahweh permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Ruach HaKadosh and have tasted the good word of Elohim, the meat of the word, and the powers of the world to come, okay, after the age of grace, okay? Um, and let's pick up with verse 6. And they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. Okay, those who perish for lack of knowledge, those who pretty much refuse to endure sound doctrine, you know, um, 
those who want no part of the meat of the word. They just want to be bottle fed um, milk in an institutionalized church building, you know, Laodicea, the lukewarm church. Um, you know, these briars and thorns will be rejected, you know, and they will be burned. Um, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For Yahweh is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shewed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do shew the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when Yahweh made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing... I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily sway, swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Everything outlined as bad fruit in Galatians 5, 19-21 wherein Yahweh, willing more abundantly to shew unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for Elohim to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Yeshua, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Okay? And so, you know, our blessed hope, those of us who know we are guided into all truth and shown things to come, those who are set free indeed, um, we know that our blessed hope of Titus 2.13 Really, it is a strong anchor. You know, he is the lover of our souls. And, you know, we know that um, those of us who want the meat of the word, those who know what will happen in the age to come, we know that um, Matthew 25, 1, according to Matthew's original Aramaic scriptures, it does speak of the same people, the same event outlined in Psalm 45, verse 13 through 14. You know, where it is clear, um, Matthew initially wrote, Then the kingdom of heaven will be compared to ten virgins. The same took their lamps and went to meet the groom and the bride. And so we know that the one woman bride is in fact the daughter of the king prophesied about in Psalm 45, 13. And the five wise virgins are her companions prophesied about in Psalm 45, 14. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is of wrought gold. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. And we know that Psalm 45 does fall under the Luke 24, 44 category. All things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. And this correlates with exactly what Isaiah the prophet wrote about in Isaiah 55, 11, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. And so knowing this, um, he does not want anyone to harden their hearts in violation of Hebrews 4, 7. Again, he limits a certain day, saying to David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Okay, so based upon my research, according to Unger's Bible Handbook, Psalm 45.6 proves the king, with a lowercase k, does in fact point to Yeshua the Messiah, the king of kings, where the sons of Korah made clear in the King James Version translation, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Psalm 45.3 correlates with the thigh of Yeshua the Messiah mentioned in Revelation 19.16. Um, and so let us read Psalm 45.3 and Revelation 19.16 from the King James Version Bible. Um, gird, thy, gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty. 
um, Revelation 19, 16, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I realize there is much confusion about Psalm 45, but because Luke wrote in Luke 24, 44 that Yeshua will fulfill all scripture written about him, this does include Psalm 45. Um, the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony is what Yeshua returns from in either the second watch or in the third watch mentioned in Luke 12, 36 through 38. Luke 12, 35 through 39, King James Version. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning, and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Really I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, and not have suffered his house to be broken through okay so that hour um mentioned in luke 12 okay that's a 60 minute hour so we know that the bride she goes up in the first watch okay right around 9 p.m at night you know when yeshua the messiah cries out to her rise up my love my fair one and come away son of solomon 2 10 that's when the bride is removed off the planet um according to revelation 18:23. Okay, and then after he proposes to her um, in the night skies, um, I guess a couple of minutes later, you know, the spirit and the bride will shout out, come to the five wise virgins. And that's when the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony will take place um, in the Shamayim, where Yahweh's throne room is located in the third heavens. Okay, and, um, and there will be a huba, and she will wear her wedding dress wrought in gold. And, you know, it, it's, um, it's going to be a wedding ceremony. I, you know, nobody knows how long it'll last. It'll, it could take an hour. It could take two hours. It could take even three hours, you know, but we know that he does return from the wedding ceremony in the second or third watch. Okay. And then that's when the rapture of you know, the rest of the church takes place, those who missed the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony. Um, you know, for in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of Elohim in heaven. That's Matthew twenty two thirty. It's just basically like saying, you know, that he's not going to marry the guests. He's not going to marry the bridesmaids. He's going to marry his wife. In biblical marriage scriptures, he's allowed to fulfill. Luke 24, 44, um, Isaiah 55, 11. And so we know that the first watch, the second watch, and the third watch, it's all within the same, you know, time frame, like within the same 12-hour period, okay? And so we know that, um, he has to return from a wedding in the second or third watch. There is no mentioning of the words first watch. Why? Because the bride is removed in the first watch. Okay. And so to further our study, to take note from Psalm 45, which is the wedding ceremony Yeshua returns from all the way to Luke chapter 12, where it is clear Dr. Luke mentions in verse 36, Yeshua the Messiah returns from a wedding. It is a total of 463 inclusive chapters. That is from Psalm 45 to Luke chapter 12. 463, according to Strong's Greek concordance, means forbearance or to tolerate patient self-restraint so in other words when yeshua returns from the psalm 45 wedding ceremony he will allow or tolerate people to attend the marriage supper of the lamb celebration after the rapture occurs you know outlined in matthew 22 30 and in 1 thessalonians chapter 4 verse 15 through 18 um, which takes place in either the second watch or the third watch, depending on how long the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony lasts. Um, there will be people who will miss the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony, but will be able to attend the marriage supper of the Lamb following the second or third watch rapture. You know, the resurrection um, outlined in Mark 12, 25 and in Matthew 22, 30. Um, this proves the bride, the Lamb's wife, does go up in the first watch along with the virgins, her companions, mentioned in Psalm 45, 14, when Yeshua cries out to her, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. This proves the spirit and the bride will shout out, Come, after she accepts 
intercepts his proposal in the sky after she is translated, mentioned in Revelation 18.23. Um, so it will come to pass, you know, when her beloved will speak to her audibly and he will cry out to her, rise up my love, my fair one, and come away, fulfilling Song of Solomon 2.10. You know, the bride mentioned in Revelation 18.23 is from a nation that will and has deceived all the other nations of planet Earth. When the bride mentioned in Revelation 18.23 is removed off the planet in the first watch, Song of Solomon will be fulfilled in chapter 2, verse 10. Um, and this will take place, you know, when the bride is removed off the earth. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants, for the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. To say the Messiah Yeshua is not allowed to fulfill these scriptures is really in violation of 2 Timothy 2.9, where Paul makes clear the word of Elohim really is not bound. Um, it's not. You can't wrap chains around Psalm 45 or Matthew 25.1-13. You just can't do that. Um, you know, it, it's he. none of his words will come back to him void as proven in Isaiah 55.11. You know, that's why Paul wrote to Timotheus that the word of Elohim is not bound. No word will come back to him void in any of the 31,102 scripture verses from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. Um, the King of Kings mentioned in Revelation 19.16, we all know, is Yeshua HaMashiach, and we know that he is allowed to have a queen fulfilling Psalm 45.9, his wife whose wedding dress will be wrought in the gold of Ophir. Um, and so this is an event we do not want to miss. You know, he will be crowned king, um, fulfilling Revelation 19.16, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we don't want to miss out on this um, crowning ceremony. Really, we don't. Um, so yes, because Luke wrote that Yeshua would fulfill all scripture written about him, written in the Law of Moses, written in the Prophets, and written in the Psalms, this does mean that the King of Kings is allowed to have a queen fulfilling Psalm 45.9. Psalm 45, verse 9 through 14, King James Version. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. Hearken, O daughter, and consider, and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people and thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy lord, and worship thou him. And the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is is of wrought gold. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. When the spirit and the bride shout out, Come to the five wise virgins of today's society, you know, the five wise will rejoice, and the hundreds of women claiming to be her will be ashamed and will refuse to attend the greatest event in the history of this earth. This is not what I recommend, knowing many will be beheaded for refusing the mark of the beast. Um, so, you know, when the spirit and the bride shout out, come, um, we want to rejoice, okay? We want to be part of the five wise, okay? The spirit and the bride will shout out, come. Everyone, you know, who hears this should also say, come. All who are thirsty may come. They can have the water of life as a free gift if they want it, Revelation 22, 17. Um, we know it cannot be a coincidence that Titus 2.13 is, in fact, the 6,777th verse of the New Testament within the King James Version Bible from the first verse that is obviously Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. Um, we know the wise virgins are, in fact, meek, mentioned in Matthew 5.5. 5. From Matthew 5.5 5 to Matthew 25.7 is 777 inclusive verses in the KJV Bible, and the bride mentioned in Revelation 21.9 is represented by three sevens as well. The meek know there is nothing too hard for Adonai Elohim, as proven in Jeremiah 32 in verse 17 and in verse 27. Um, and we know that Jeremiah 32 is the 777th chapter of the KJV Bible. 
Ah, Lord God, ah, Adonai Elohim, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Jeremiah 32, verse 17 and 27, King James Version. Okay, nothing is too hard for him. Absolutely nothing. Okay, um, the bride is perfect, marked by perfection of three sevens in Revelation 21 9 um, for a very good reason. She would never unveil herself prior to the rapture, which would not make any sense according to Galatians 5 19 through 21 and Genesis 24 61 through 67, as it is clear Rebecca wore a veil when initially meeting Isaac for the first time. It is symbolic of the robe knowing to remain hidden or veiled until the apocalypse takes place um, revelation in English you know when you translate this in Espanol um, or Spanish it does mean apocalypsis and apocalypse means unveiling okay and so you know it, it's really not a coincidence that apocalypse means an unveiling she would never go against um, the apocalypse that was revealed only to Yohanan on the Isle of Patmos, okay? Um, and so we can see here that um, Yohanan make, made very clear in Revelation 21, 9, um, that she is represented by three sevens. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will shew thee the bride, the lamb's wife. Okay, the five wise virgins who do go out to meet the groom and the bride really are meek, marked by 777, and they know nothing is too hard for Adonai Elohim, proven in Jeremiah chapter 32. Okay, um, it is very clear that Revelation 19, 7 through 9 proves the bride has made herself ready by repenting. Um, the bride mentioned in the original parable of the ten virgins is the same bride mentioned in Revelation 18, 19, 21, and 22. Revelation 18, 23, and Revelation 19, 7 through 9 proves the bride has to be alive on the planet when the rapture takes place. This means that any specific woman mentioned by first or last name in the New Testament who has been home in heaven for well over 1900 years cannot be the bride. Um, and so we can read the account of the wedding supper of the Lamb, which will take place after um, he returns from the wedding, you know, in the second or third watch, you know, when the resurrection occurs mentioned in Matthew 22, 30. Um, and so when he returns from the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony in the second or third watch, then the rapture of 1 Thessalonians 4 takes place. And then those who accept the kingdom of Elohim like a small child, they will be accounted worthy to escape the coming wrath. Okay, and they will be accounted worthy to attend the marriage supper of the Lamb. Revelation 19, 7 through 9, King James Version. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready, not themselves. And to her, not them, was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they, more than one person, which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of Elohim. Okay? We are supposed to allow the truth to set us free. Um, when we allow the royal Kakadesh to set us free indeed, we allow Yeshua to show us that Luke was instructed to write about Yeshua fulfilling all scripture and all of the Psalms. Um, what he showed me is that it is no ordinary coincidence that from Psalm 45 to Luke 24, it is a total of 475 inclusive chapters within the KJV Bible. And so to go over, again, Luke 24, 44 through 45, um, it's very clear Dr. Luke wrote these very important words. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Okay. Um, the number 475, according to Strong's Greek Concordance, means to place oneself in opposition, to oppose, to dispose in turn, 
um, to take in hand in turn to retaliate, to set oneself opposite, that is, be disputatious, that oppose themselves. And really, this is, you know, targeting people um, and confronting people who oppose sound doctrine, okay? Um, and this really is in violation of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23 through 26, um, which makes clear, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if Elohim peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. He will be crowned king the same day his wife will be crowned queen. Um, you know, and, and this correlates with what um, Solomon wrote in Son of Solomon chapter 3, verse 11. Go forth, O ye daughters of Zion, and behold, King Solomon with the crown wherewith his mother crowned him in the day of his espousals and in the day of the gladness of his heart. This event is a foreshadow of Yeshua the Messiah being crowned um, king of kings. And he will have a queen, you know, and um, she will fulfill Psalm 45, 9. Um, you know, the day that he gets married to his dove, his favorite one. Um, the Messiah Yeshua is allowed to fulfill Song of Solomon 311 the same day the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony takes place. She is his dove, his favorite one, and clearly Abishag is a foreshadow of the hidden bride, the Lamb's wife, who knows who she is in agreement with Song of Solomon 6.3. Um, there are three score queens and four score concubines and virgins without number. My dove, my undefiled, is but one. She is the only one of her mother. She is the choice one of her that bear her. The daughters saw her and blessed her, yea, the queens and the concubines, and they praised her. Okay? And so she is his favorite one. Um... When the bride wears her wedding dress wrought in the gold of Ophir, she will be wearing the shoes mentioned in Song of Solomon 7.1 during the wedding ceremony. Um, Song of Solomon 7.1, King James Version. How beautiful are thy feet with shoes, O prince's daughter! The joints of thy thighs are like jewels, the work of the hands of a cunning workman. Okay, and so... I don't know what the shoes will look like, but I am sure that the shoes that she will wear when she wears her wedding dress, rotten gold, are going to be the most gorgeous shoes you have ever seen. <laughs> so I can only imagine what she will look like when she walks down the aisle, you know, when, when she gets married to Yeshua, her king. Um, many women claiming that the bride has to be from a nation that is considered south, misquoting Matthew twelve forty two and Luke eleven thirty one, really... I'm doing this out of kindness because I care. I do know that the Queen of the South mentioned in these scripture verses will be there. So I'm just planting a seed, you know, because I love everyone and I don't want to see anyone get left behind. You know, the Queen of the South, the Queen of Sheba will be there during the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony and she will be attending the marriage supper of the Lamb. You know, and I'm just doing this because I care for the lost. Um, this is not only in violation of Revelation 22, 18 through 19 for twisting scriptures into lies, but it is in violation of Jeremiah 23, 29 through 32. The Lord just gave me and commanded me to include this in my update, which he pleaded with me. Please, you know, read Jeremiah 23, 29 through 32. He really put it on my heart um, to include this in with this study. Um, Jeremiah 23, verse 29 through 32, King James Version. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say he saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness yet i sent them not nor commanded them therefore they shall not profit this pe the, this people at all saith the lord 
okay? The Queen of the South mentioned in Matthew 12, 42 and Luke eleven thirty one is mentioned nowhere in the 22 chapters within the book of Revelation. Yohanan saw the bride in a vision when he was exiled on Patmos in AD 96. He would have definitely mentioned the Queen of the South in Revelation 18, 19, 21, or in 22, if Matthew 12, 42 and Luke eleven thirty one applies to the bride, the lamb's wife in these scriptures, but Yohanan did not make one mention of this woman anywhere in the 404 scripture verses from Revelation 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21. And so I would like to read Matthew 12, 42, which pretty much speaks of exactly what Luke wrote about in Luke eleven thirty one. Um, the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold a greater than Solomon is here. According to Unger's Bible Handbook, 1984 Revised Edition, the Queen of the South mentioned in Matthew 12:42 and Luke 11:31 was the Queen of Sheba mentioned in 1 Kings chapter 10 from verse 1 through 13. According to Unger, the Queen of Sheba was from southwest region of Arabia known as modern-day Yemen, mentioned in 8th and 7th century cuneiform sources as the Gentile Queen of Sheba, who traveled a great distance to hear the wisdom of Solomon. She did not see a single miracle because when Solomon was alive, Yeshua the Messiah was not born yet. Solomon's temple was destroyed 586 BC and Yeshua the Messiah was not born until 3 BC, exactly 583 years after the destruction of Solomon's temple. If she had been privileged to live in the days of the Messiah Yeshua, how readily she would have received him. Um, therefore, she will rise up in judgment against those wicked men who were privileged to see the supernatural works of Yeshua the Messiah, who nonetheless rejected him. A greater than Solomon had stepped on the, on the stage of human history. The men of Nineveh repented at the preaching of Jonah. The men of Israel refused to repent um, at the preaching of a greater than Jonah. Um, this commentary is from William MacDonald from the Believer's Bible Commentary 2nd Edition. Unbelief today scoffs at the story of Jonah, assigning it to Hebrew legend. Yeshua spoke of Jonah as an actual person of history, just as he spoke of King Solomon. People who say they would believe if they could see a miracle are mistaken. Faith is not based on evidences of the senses, but on the living infallible word of Elohim. Uh, the attitude of a scoffer that demands a visual sign is not pleasing to Elohim in many situations. That is not Abrahamic faith, um, but only walking by sight. Unbelief says, let me see, and then I will believe. Elohim says, believe, and then you will see. So the bride does not necessarily have to be from a southern region of the world. She does not have to be from New Zealand or from a southern state of North America. Um, he can choose anyone he wants, and she does not have to be from a region south of the equator line or from a southern country located in one of the seven continents of this planet. I hope this helps. The bride is a hidden veiled bride as proven in Genesis 24, 61 through 67. And this means that everything that pertains to the hidden bride is not going to be known until after the rapture, after she is unveiled. She is not going to insist on being the queen of the south because this is not setting people free indeed concerning this great deception. Fighting on YouTube um, and coming sections demanding on being her is not witnessing to the lost these very last days. I hope this message blesses you and I hope we fly home soon. Shalom.